Hi, it's Miss Amanda here to say I miss you all so much. I miss being in the art studio and seeing all of your amazing artwork. And I'm really looking forward to the day when we can be in the art studio making stuff together again. But until that day comes, we have video lessons. So today I'm going to be showing you a project that has two pieces of inspiration. The first is our social distancing doodle a day, which many of you have been participating in and your drawings are outstanding. I have so much fun seeing those every day. Thank you for sharing them. I'm a little behind. I am on, I can't remember which day, but it's the tulip prompt. So I'm going to be making a tulip today. And the second piece of inspiration came from my dinner last night. So I was cooking and the recipe called for a head of red cabbage. So I chopped it up and I put it in the pan and cooked it on medium. And when it was done cooking, I noticed that there was all of this beautiful, bright, purplish, pink, maybe we'll call it like a fuchsia color in the pan. And I was like, oh snap, that is something I can paint with. Um, because maybe you are someone who is at home and you don't have any paint right now and you can't get to a store to buy some. Well, you don't need fancy art supplies. You can use cabbage water. So I drained my cabbage and I kept all of that beautiful bright water and I decided as an experiment, I'm going to paint with it today. I don't know how this is going to go, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to start with a pencil just sketching my tulip. And if you want to try something like this, you don't have to use cabbage water, but if you do want a fun experiment and cabbage is on the menu for dinner tonight, save, save that beautiful water and see what you can make with it. Otherwise, you can use paint, uh, watercolor, or just, you know, whatever. Just draw a tulip with me. So I'm going to start with pencil. I'm going to start my tulip by lightly drawing the general shape and size of the flower. Then I will start placing the larger petals, trying to capture the right shape and size, making the curves and edges of the petals more precise as I go along with my pencil. Last, I'm going to add some lines running across the length of each petal to show all the little wrinkles and folds on the petals. My drawing is going to have a more realistic scientific style, so I'm using careful observation to notice and capture all the details of this one unique tulip, not just any tulip, this specific tulip. I'm looking at a photo that I found on the internet because I couldn't find a real tulip outside. You can do the same thing or even better draw a tulip that is outside that you find or you can draw from your imagination in a totally different style. Your drawing does not have to be scientific like mine or as detailed, it can be more cartoony or simple. It does not have to look like mine at all. In fact, it shouldn't because you are your own artist drawing your own tulip. So just have fun drawing your flower. Okay, so I have my pencil drawing of my flower with the shapes and the contour lines. Again, yours can be simpler. It doesn't have to be quite as detailed as this, whatever you feel like doing. My next step is to cover my pencil lines with ink pen. The reason I'm doing this is because my cabbage water wash is going to be pretty light and it's probably not going to be able to capture all of those little wrinkles and details and edges of my petals and those darkest shadows. And I really like the pencil drawing I made and I want to keep some of those lines. So I'm gonna cover the marks that I wanna keep with my black pen. So I'm using a black micron pen, which is a fancy fine tip pen. If you have a fine tip Sharpie, that is also an excellent tool for this step. Even if you just have a ballpoint pen, that could work, or a sharp colored pencil, whatever you have available. You just wanna make sure that if you are painting over this with cabbage water or watercolor or some kind of paint, you need to use a pen that is not water soluble. It's not water-based because the paint will make that pen bleed. So no Crayola markers for this step. 
those will bleed if you paint over them. If you're not painting over your flower to add color, then you don't need to worry about this. You can use whatever you tool you have. You can use a dark colored pencil, a marker, and then add color however you plan. Maybe you're using crayon, maybe you're using colored pencil. It is up to you. Remember, your flower does not have to look like mine. You don't have to use the exact same tools as me. This is just about making a beautiful tulip to celebrate the start of spring and to have fun experimenting with art materials. Okay, it's time to start painting. So I'm gonna want a container for my cabbage water in addition to a cup of water. I also want a dish because I'm going to be mixing my cabbage water with regular water to create sort of lighter shades of the color. I'm also going to need some paint brushes and I like to keep some paper under my workspace to make less of a mess. Before you start painting, make sure that you erase your pencil lines on your drawing. You can see that I forget that step. Oops, everybody makes mistakes, even teachers. Once all of your pencil lines are erased, then you're good to start adding paint. You can use cabbage paint just like I did, and there is a recipe at the end of the video if you want to try that. Or if you have watercolor paint, you can use watercolor paint. That looks great for this. Any other kind of paint can be thinned out with water to have a similar effect. If you don't have any paint or any vegetables that you can cook up to make paint, then just use whatever art supplies you have available. And just try to pay attention to where your colors should be a little lighter or darker or more intense on your tulip. The first step is to cover the whole tulip with a light wash of color that I've mixed with a little bit of plain water to make it very light. Then I'm gonna go in with the very tip of my paintbrush and I'm gonna add some bright cabbage water to the areas that should be a little brighter or darker. I'm paying close attention to my reference picture or my tulip, and I am adding more cabbage water or paint to the areas that should be brighter. Maybe they have shadows. Maybe I'm putting it on some of the wrinkles of my tulip. The first layer of color has dried, so now it's time to do another wash of color. I'm going to add more of my cabbage paint to those areas of my tulip that I want to be really intense or really dark, those shadows, those fine lines, and I'm leaving the lightest parts of my tulip without any added paint on them because I want them to be lighter. This is really similar to a technique called watercolor wash. If you are using watercolors, you are doing a watercolor wash right now. For this technique, an artist usually makes a pen and ink drawing like I did to start with, and then they just do light washes of watercolor over it. Sometimes just one color, sometimes a couple. Just bring that picture to life a little bit. You can try this out with whatever materials you're using. If you're using colored pencil or crayon or another drawing material that isn't paint, then just try building up those intense and dark areas by layering lots of colors on top of each other or pressing a little harder with your pencil or your crayon. All right, plot twist. Uh, it turns out that this beautiful bright fuchsia color, when it dries on your paper, it turns bluish gray, which is pretty, not what I envisioned, not what I expected. It's an interesting turn of events. Um, but you know what? That's what happens when we experiment and when we try out different art supplies and try to make our own art supplies. Sometimes surprises happen and that's totally awesome. But this is definitely making me curious about the science behind what's happening with this color and like what's happening when it touches the paper or when it dries that's making the color change. So some research needs to happen. Okay, I did a little research and I found out that our cabbage paint just needs a little bit of acid to make those colors come back onto the page. So I just squeezed a little bit of lemon juice into this bowl and I'm going to use my paintbrush 
to apply that lemon juice to areas where I want that color to pop back out. Wow, this is like magic. Look at how every place that the lemon juice touches instantly turns that beautiful violet color again. I'm only going to paint the lemon juice on the insides of the petals and on the bases of the petals and the areas where we see the wrinkles and veins and lines of the petals. That way those areas will be violet and the other areas of my petal will be lighter so that the color kind of changes as it travels across the flower petal. Ah, oh, what an awesome science experiment. This just goes to show that if you try an experiment and it doesn't quite work out, it's worth sticking with it, doing some research and persevering. Guess what? I found out that we can also make our cabbage water turn green on our paper, or at least a blue green. To do that, I need to do the opposite of what we did to get violet. To get violet, we painted a little bit of acid. That was our lemon juice. We have to put the opposite of something acidic, and that would be a base, something basic. For us, that will be baking soda. So I'm going to mix some baking soda in with some warm water. Don't add this to the lemon juice. It will cause a chemical reaction. Water only, okay? Let's see what happens. I use two teaspoons of baking soda with about a quarter cup of warm water, and I stirred it up really well. When I start painting, you'll see that I am putting the baking soda water just on the inside edge of the top of each petal. And then I'm using the tip of my brush to sort of pull that color down in lines so that the blue green travels across the length of the petal, fading into the violet. Oh, look at that color, it's already changing. You can have a similar effect if you're using watercolor. Just choose a different color for the tips of your petals than you did for the base and pull that color down across the length of the petal. Same thing with colored pencil, crayons, whatever you're using. You can blend a different color into the top of your petal than the bottom of your petal. I just want to thank you guys for coming along with me for this art experiment. I had so much fun and I hope you have fun with whatever experiments you do. Maybe you boil some cabbage or some other vegetable and see what kind of paint you can make and what it does on your paper. Maybe you try out the watercolor wash technique I showed you with whatever paint or supplies you have laying around or just spend some time looking at a tulip or another flower and make some beautiful flower drawings to celebrate the start of spring. I can't wait to see what you make. I miss you. Have a good week.